Hello, today I'm going to make a quick demonstration on the spectrum analyzer and oscilloscope by showing how to do um, impact low test on a dummy rotor to showcase the capabilities of this newly acquired piece of equipment. First things first, we have a dummy rotor that's just a steel cylinder connected to an accelerometer carefully suspended and hooked up to this conditioner. This is a piezoelectric accelerometer that's connected to a channel one here in the analyzer. In this video we're only focusing on how to do this quick test to obtain the natural frequency of a hanging rotor and we'll start by turning the device on here's the loading screen while everything is being set up and here we have what is the spectrum analyzer but we're going to show the time domain by pressing channel 1 here so here we have a set of buttons and we press this run stop button and it's going to show what's the accelerometer looking at. I'm going to press this button to deactivate channel 2. So this is the current signal in this accelerometer. So if I excite the accelerometer I will see some peaks here and there. This could be helpful for acquiring constant signal or we're looking at a signal generator but for this time it's just uh, the signal from the accelerometer and as you may know the impact test is a very quick uh, measurement so here I'm moving the scale knob and as you may see here in the top it tells us how many points it's acquiring. I set it up to 10,000 points with a sampling rate of 20,000 samples per second. If I spin the knob it'll show me a thousand or more increasing the data points, increasing the, the resolution. But for this type of test, we don't really need something that high. So I will set it at 100,000. If we want to change the acquisition points, we can press acquire. And now it's at the sample mode and we can tell how many points we want. So here it's at sample record length and we can choose a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand or a million points and I consider that a, a ten thousand is fine so we're gonna press a menu off this round button here and now I want to enable the trigger function here's a right panel and I will press the menu and it displays the options here in the lower end of the screen and we're going to select um, edge it could be another type of trigger delay or even video or others but edge is going to be fine for an impact load the source is going to be channel one we have here the ac coupling such that the dc dc offset is eliminated we're only looking at how the signal is um, changing with time then the slope we can select an upward a downward or a mixed slope and I'm going to select a, an upward the level at 640 millivolts something that's just a little bit higher or higher than the noise that is uh, acquiring right now and mode auto and hold off we're gonna leave it at four nanoseconds that means that this thing could acquire data every four nanoseconds 
but we're just dealing with a single impact for now so I'm gonna exit this menu here then I'm going to depress the single button which means that I'm only going to acquire a single event instead of a continuous set of measurements it's just going to be one and now I'm going to look at my dummy rotor here the accelerometer that's mounted on one of the ends and I'm going to excite it with a hammer I'm gonna hit it I'm gonna tap it and the signal analyzer recorded this event we can change the scale higher and higher so if we want to look at the signal we are gonna use this knob to move left and right into the signal so you're going to the left just looking at the beginning and I consider that it is this is a very clean um, event signal it shows this nice decrement particular of a lightly damped single degree of freedom system that is our rotor that's going to tell us our natural frequency it is important to keep this um, low scale so that we can look at the entire event if we acquire and trigger while looking at a very particular set of points or we're too close to the signal you won't record the event so if I tap it here as I just did and I zoom out there's nothing because it, it was only looking at this scale it's only going to record what it's uh, going to be in this uh, 10,000 points in this tiny region and we don't want that we want to look at the entire um, response so I'm gonna tap it again again it's too zoomed in I'm gonna go back a uh, hundred thousand samples tap it again and there we have our signal and from here it's where we zoom and look at the response so what if we want to take a look at the spectrum we want to see the FFT we're going to press option and proceed to the spectrum analyzer I have it set up such that the span is 10,000 Hertz it starts at 1 Hertz it stops at 10,000 and the center is going to be at 5,000 and that is something that's already set here is a save recall button so if we want to save the setup we can tap here and we can proceed to save this setup but this has already been uh, recorded so that's something this analyzer remembers and yet again I'm going to press trigger menu so that we're in this trigger mode and here we're going to select the single event and I'm going back to the spectrum tap it and here I have the single peak this peak is showing us the natural frequency if we want to move a cursor here we're gonna depress this button and then we can move this knob here and here's two points one that starts at 3.6 kilohertz and stops at 8.6 so if I want to scroll, this analyzer is already detecting the highest peak. That is our natural frequency at 5.8 kilohertz. We depress the menu off option and we can always come, come back here and select uh, the amplitude and here I have it in the logarithmic scale but I can have it in the linear in this mode it's more visible but if we can 
If we want to go back, we can adjust it, we can move it down, and we'll be able to distinguish this peak, change this resolution. It's a pretty sharp peak, a single peak, good measurement. We're gonna go back. Oh, 20 decibel. And I'm going to bring the signal up here. And that's pretty much it. It is important to know the frequency span. This is hard at the beginning because we don't know what the natural frequency is going to be, but we could have an idea. It's never going to be something like a 50,000 Hertz or one gigahertz if we're talking about a rotor or a lightly damped structure so it's important to take that into consideration and the other thing that's really important is the acquisition mode and as, as i just pointed it when we go back if we want to go back to the time domain we press here and we will see what the analyzer just acquired we can go back here and i'm changing the scale I can also, if I want to change the um, acquisition uh, points, I'll just tap here and single again, acquire, and I can change my resolution. And yet again, we can excite this, and it'll show us. And that's pretty much it. It's really important to maintain samples per second the number of samples that you're acquiring and use this option spectrum analyzer if we want to look at the spectrum again it detects 5.8 kilohertz unfortunately this analyzer only works with one channel at a time so if we want if we would like to look at the um, at two uh responses if we if i wanted to do a free free mode uh, analysis i wouldn't be able because it only takes one at a time so i cannot compare the magnitude of the acceleration at the peak i can observe the face act but i can only do it in the time domain so it is important to remember that.